In this video we will learn how to organize a complex scene in 3D Studio Max to be able to do different kind of visualizations in one go without any changes. The first thing I recommend that you organize your scene properly. Uh, if I go into select from scene, by the way, this is the H key, you can see that all my files have, um, all my objects have proper names. You can, uh, you can hardly see any files which are named box and things like this. So that's a really good way of uh, how to find your objects. I always organize my scene with uh, the layer manager. And I just see that I have a layer structure which fits to my uh, project. For example, I have a layer for cameras, I have a layer for my daylight system, for uh, doors and uh, windows, for people. I can just create a new layer. Uh, I just go to um, create new layer and I call it uh, my design. And uh, when I have created a layer, you can always see this uh, little symbol and you can see that this is my active layer. You always have to activate the layer and the active layer is a layer where you actually uh, draw on. For example, if I go into my design and I just uh, create a box uh, like this, uh, not important, doesn't make any sense, but uh, then you can just see that I just created a box into uh, the layer my design. I already said uh, I don't want to uh, have objects which are just called a box uh, because then I don't know uh, what this was in the future. I just call it delete box so I know that I can uh, uh, should delete it and I can just drag and drop it and put it into other layers. I just drag and drop my box and for example put it into the layer furniture and uh, here we go and uh, this is a really easy way of how to deal with your uh, layer manager. There are a lot of videos uh, out about the layer manager where you can uh, uh, learn how to use it properly. I'll just show you very few options of your uh, layer manager. If I just open one of the layers, you can select uh, why the ma uh, layer manager your objects in the scene, obviously also uh, uh, several kind of uh, objects. Uh, you can nest layers into other layers. For example, if I take the layer furniture, I can nest it into this layer uh, staircase. Uh, here we go. And uh, what you can also do is uh, you have a lot of white mouse options. If I just say white mouse click and uh, there's the options like unnest, also many other options. I just go into unnest and now my uh, layer furniture is uh, on my uh, first hierarchy again. You can also select uh, several layers with your shift key and just say uh, unhide. And uh, now you unhide your layers with the object. And always important, uh, the layer you uh, want to draw on has to be the active layer. And in this menu, uh, you can just um, see what kind of uh, objects uh, you want to display in your uh, layer manager. If I go in cameras, uh, for example, and I just say uh, display camera cameras off, then your layer cameras looks empty because I was just uh, hiding your cameras uh, in, uh, in the layer manager. What I use quite often is uh, the tool selection set. Uh, that's a really handy, uh, handy thing. I can uh, use selection sets. For example, I have uh, my selection set first floor and I just choose my selection set, go into isolate selection and can temporarily work uh, on uh, the first floor of my options. I can also just uh, choose very few objects, uh, just go into my uh, floor plan. I zoom to the furniture and I just can collect uh, these uh, furniture. And if I go into my layer manager, this one also uh, I would like to choose. And I just type into my creation set um, furniture. Here we go. If I deselect it, I can just go again into my creation set, choose furniture and do isolate selection. I can also go into my setting of my selection set. I just choose my new selection set furniture and there are some things I didn't want to have as a part of my selection. I just delete these, these lights. I can also just say white right mouse click and uh, 
remove my whole selection set. So that's a really good tool of how to organize uh, and select objects. And uh, it's much better than groups. I hardly ever use groups. The only reason why I use group is for import export. Otherwise, I don't like groups because you always have to open the group. You always have to close the group. So a selection set is much better. I just go into group and just say group um, furniture like this. And if I then save my scene, then you can import uh, your group uh, just via the saved uh, file beforehand. And you can um, choose your objects uh, while the list. Uh, I know that's a group, so I just deselect group. I just say invert uh, groups. And here are all my groups. And I just see that in this list is also my group furnitures. I just import them in my scene. And I just uh, ungroup this. And that's also a good way of um, um, of moving objects or a section of objects to one scene to the other. For visualizations, I use a lot my light lister. And uh, the light lister gives me control over my lights. And you can also see if I have lights as instances, you can see this in a polar menu. You can change the parameters. And always, ch if you change the parameters in your scene, you have to refresh your light lister. Another really powerful tool for how to organize your scene is under tools, your manage scene state uh, tool. And uh, I just have selected uh, some of these chairs. I just switched on some photomatic light to see a difference. Uh, I just go into isolate selection. And so I can only see my chairs. And what I do right now, I just save this scene state. And you always have to be aware of which kind of properties uh, you uh, want to save. I want to save my object properties, my light properties, cameras, I don't know. I don't want uh, my layer properties I want to change and uh, everything else I don't want to uh, change. And I just call this chair. And um, I did it. It's now in my list. I change it again to any other um, scene state. I just go into this and just say restore. And also here you can uh, choose which kind of properties you want to restore. You can only restore properties which you actually saved beforehand. I just restore everything. OK, my scene uh, is back for my uh, scene state. And if I go again into chair and I just restore this one, uh, then you should just see what is uh, happening. For, uh, sorry, I just switch these ones off. I just go into refresh. So we see the difference. Okay, this is the light setting for my uh, camera first uh, floor um, scene state. I just go into restore, uh, restore chair. And we see what's happening, actually. My store, uh, my chairs are isolated again. I go into my light lister and I say refresh. And we just see that it changes everything. It also change, uh, changes my light settings and whatever kind of settings you have sa uh, saved. Even if you moved objects from one place to the other, you can save it with your manage scene states. If I work with complex scenes, I'm always aware of that my material has proper names so I know uh, which kind of material belongs to which kind of uh, object. I also work with presets. Um, if you use my workspace and you just go into low presets, uh, load presets, then you can already see that there are a lot of presets uh, uh, available. I normally never use common because this is just the size of the uh, presets. In environment, I normally have my exposure control. If I'm fine with my exposure control, I also don't load this. And it's definitely possible that for one scene, you have different kind of presets. For example, for one scene, you have a lot of artificial light. So you have the preset for artificial light. And for one scene, you want to probably have a fast uh, visualization of only wireframe. So you can change the presets. And you can also save the presets for different kind of scene. And I will show you how to do this right now. Under lighting and rendering, you find your batch renderer. If you use uh, the design uh, 
uh, workspace and uh, if you just use a normal workspace you just go under, ba under batch renderer and you can already see that I saved a different kind of um, settings for visualizations and the interesting thing is once you did this you can just uh, select in your menu your uh, visualizations and uh, you can just choose which kind of visualization you want to render and uh, then with the next step you just click on your uh, render button and in this case you see that I changed my um, uh, visualization path. I just go into update path and for example choose my path uh, render and then one visualization after the others will be uh, rendered in my uh, render queue. Just wait a few seconds. Here you can see that your um, render window opened and if you cancel it just tells you that it didn't finish with all your visualizations. But if you wouldn't have canceled it, you would have a folder with all your visualizations of your uh, batch renderer. Using the batch renderer is really easy. I give you a small example. I just go into add and uh, here you see you have a new um, uh, rendering setup. I just rename it. I just rename it test render and uh, I copy this file. I just have to choose my output path. I just go into render output or for example like the same folder like before render and just call it file name uh, test render. I define um, format a JPEG format or probably if you want to change it in Photoshop it's good to have a HDR file. I just go into save. Uh, yes and then I choose the camera for my for my rendering. I can choose the scene state. We already talked about uh, the scene state beforehand, for example, like my scene state chair or the ca camera for my, uh, for my first floor, this scene state. I can even choose a preset, what kind of render preset I would like to have, for example, my standard render preset. And uh, if you didn't change or uh, chose the preset, it will just choose the preset of uh, my uh, actually open scene. You can also define the size. For example, you want to have this uh, uh, bigger and so uh, this is also possible and uh, you can have it as a part of your render queue and you can deselect it as a part of your render queue and if you then choose your favorite visualizations and you go into render, uh, after some hours, probably overnight, uh, you have a folder with all your uh, visualization which you have chosen um, in your batch renderer and uh, you didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to work with different kind of scenes. You just did it in one scene and you just selected in your batch renderer, your scene state, your preset and your camera and that's it. Okay, last but not least, I show you how to save your file so you can share the file with uh, other users or also uh, uh, archive your, your file. You just go into uh, save. A pull-up menu will open. You go into archive and I just save this on my uh, desktop. Zero one, I already did it beforehand. I just go into save. And now it takes some seconds. It can really take also one minute because it collects all your files, all your um, external connected mappings and all your data. And uh, it's also like this that you have this little window. You just really have to wait. Okay, this is a quite big scene. It's still calculating and now it finished. And uh, we just look at this now uh, in my Windows Explorer. This is the file I organized. It's a zip file. We just open the zip file and I just go inside and you can see uh, that here is your 3D Studio Max file and it connected all your uh, external uh, mappings. Uh, they're all inside um, and uh, just go inside so you can see all your mappings and everything and that's a really good way of uh, sharing your uh, 3D Studio files. Um, that other people are able to open the file as you saved it and be able to uh, use it for visualizations. So, thanks for watching.